Welcome everyone here to the Smash Board Show right here on Smash FM here on a Monday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go across to our friends over in WA. And of course, be, uh, we've uh, one of the most amazing athletes uh, we've had on the show because her name's Rhiannon Clark. And of course, she joins us right now. Thanks, Rhiannon, for joining us. Thank you for having me. No worries. So tell us a bit about your year so far um, in 2023. Yeah, this year's been a pretty big year. I competed at the World Pathletics Championships where I came away with some pretty good results. I got silver in the 400 metres and I got fourth in the 100 and 200. Am I assuming that the 400 is your favourite event? Not exactly quite my favourite event. Oh. <laughs> um, I think I'm just better at it, but uh, it is good. It's a rewarding event. I do like running it. Well, not exactly during it, but afterwards it's quite a good reward. The 100 is definitely a lot quicker, but yeah, they're both very different events. Tell us about the lead up to that um, to the Worlds and especially the fact that, and especially the results that you managed to achieve. How was the preparation and were you satisfied with the result? Even though I know you probably wanted to come away with gold. Were you reasonably happy at the end of it? Yeah, no, I think I was pretty happy with the results. I was a little bit shocked by it. I thought I was probably going to do better in the 100 and the 200 in comparison to the 400. But yeah, no, I think the lead up was a little bit challenging. There was a few niggles here and there, but I'm pretty happy to have just like, yeah, made it to the competition. And yeah, to come away with any sort of medal, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool honour. Tell us a bit about the 400 metre race. Oh yeah, the 400, I would say is probably one of the most challenging athletics events some people would kind of debate me on that, but I do say it's pretty like challenging because it is kind of an awkward distance. It's both a sprint, but that's also very long. So yeah, there's lots of different work that has to go into it. Definitely lots of lactic work. And yes, yeah, so you pretty much just got to do four 100 meter sprints, but all in a row. So yeah, it's challenging, but it's very rewarding. I know you're focusing on the race and on, and how you're trapped and how you're trained during the race, but did you have a little glimpse of where you were at, the, at any stage of the race and when I could actually medal here? Yeah, no, definitely. So I think I went into the race thinking there was a chance for medal, but I was ranked fourth. So I did know I had to pull something out, especially a PB, to be able to go on that podium. I think about the 150 meter mark, I could see I was sitting in third place. I could see myself quite far ahead of the person in fourth place. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of guaranteed a medal if I can finish this race and not die off. And then the person who was coming in second, they slowed down quite a bit. So I think I just took that opportunity. and was like, I'm just going to give it my all. And I ended up beating that person. So it was, yeah, quite an interesting race. You have a lot more time to think in a 400 compared to a 100. So, yeah, you definitely got to have your mind in the game. When did you actually eventually caught up and actually overtook, uh, who, and obviously to take the silver medal? Yeah, I think it was probably about maybe about 60, 70 metres to go to the finish line. So, yeah, this, yeah, I was kind of coming in third for majority of the race. But, yeah, I think, I don't know, something would just in me just clicked. And, I don't know, I just managed to come and overtake them and beat them by a decent amount, which is pretty cool. I guess when you overtook the silver medal, uh, obviously the second uh, place runner um, before you overtook them, did you, how far away were you to hopefully claim gold? I think it's a little bit off. The person who did get gold, they did run a world record, which is quite crazy. Um, but yeah, and I think the race, I, yeah, was kind of in the mix of it for the majority of the race. But yes, yeah, so I think it's just kind of with the 400s, whoever can just hold on for the longest and the girl who uh, won the gold, yeah, she definitely held on. How rewarding was it to stand on the podium with the silver medal I know, I was, as you mentioned, it wasn't, it's not your favourite event, but to have that, that hard work preparing for this event and coming away with a silver medal, what did that mean to you when you were staying on the podium? Yeah, I think I just felt, I felt a lot of emotions when I, like, found out that I had won the silver medal. I think it was more definitely shock after the race. There's quite a few photos of me crossing the line being, like, in all and my mouth is open and I'm like ah, I can't believe I just did this and I could not wipe the smell off the, my face for the rest of the day and I think actually getting on that podium it just it felt like a such a relief because all that hard work that I'd done it had actually paid off and yeah it was I don't know just like it showed myself that yeah I was able to do something that I put my mind to. So we're in the summer of, um, of athletics at the moment 
have you got any events coming up yeah I do have a few events coming up uh, most of them are just local events I'm going to be competing at the UWA Athletics Club Big Six so that's for the top athletes in WA it's going to be a pretty cool event and then I'll just do some local strive competitions at the WA Athletics Stadium just to get prepared for the yeah upcoming national season and then the international season. Since that event the Wells when do you think it sunk in that you won that uh, silver medal? I don't know it took quite a while I think <laughs> yeah I don't know it didn't feel like this real when I'd won it and I was like sitting there just staring at it like after the event I'm like oh my goodness I actually got this and yeah I think it just took a little while I had a little trip after and then I think yeah kind of when I got back I was like wow I forgot this but it's made me more hungry and it makes me want to be able to go back and do it again so yeah, just got to keep going. You mentioned that obviously you've got um, a couple events in Perth at the moment um, in preparation. Um, How is that travelling? And are you sort of training as like a, you know, a big event, uh, the next couple coming up um, as we head towards the end of the year or doing a bit of preparation heading to 2024? I think heading into 2024, uh, at the end of this year, I'm probably going to be doing a bit more kind of training runs rather than, treating it as full-on competitions but I think with every race I usually am pretty competitive so I want to do my best but yeah my training is not going to change too much around these comps but once we get into next year that's when it's really going to heat up and the comps are going to be yeah pretty big. Now of course 2024 is the year of the Paralympics I mean, of course uh, coming up how how's that traveling and I guess I'm assuming we're going to see you um, representing Australia in the Paralympics coming up in uh, Paris? Yeah, that's definitely the goal. I definitely want to qualify for the Australian Paralympic team. I already went to Tokyo. So, yeah, to make a second Paralympics and at Paris, I'm only going to be 22 years old. So that's pretty cool if I make two Paralympics by the age of 22. But I've still got a little bit of work to do. Uh, okay. Qualify first, but I think it's looking pretty good and I'm pretty excited for it. It's going to be such a good event. It's hopefully going to have a massive crowd and Hopefully I can qualify for both the 100 and 400 again. How much did the Wells um, in regarding to that preparation? I know it's by then, um, by the time hopefully you get into the Paralympics, it will be almost a year. Um, how, how much is that going to help you? Uh, or is that almost some sort of qualification to like upgrade to get you there? Yeah, so hopefully, we still haven't exactly found out the qualifiers yet, but I'm pretty sure hopefully it should be counted towards the qualifiers. But yeah, just having a world champs, even though it's kind of a little step down from the Paralympics, it's good to be able to go out, race all the girls that you're going to be racing at the Paralympics and have that practice. And I think having practice running at a big level definitely prepares you for an even bigger level. So yeah, definitely running 400s. Yeah, they definitely prepare me because I haven't really, well, that was my second 400 I've run internationally. So it was, yeah, definitely some good practice. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to, yeah, running another 400 internationally. You mentioned just before um, about the qualifiers. Um, do you know what that is coming up? I know you sort of mentioned it briefly just before. Yeah, so we're not quite sure yet what the qualifiers are. They get to release them and also when the qualifying period is. But... Um, seen from the results from Worlds, it's usually based off them. So I'm hoping they shouldn't be too hard. They usually are quite challenging, especially for a Paralympics because, yeah, Australia definitely wants to take the top athletes. So I think it's just kind of a waiting game. And once they come out, at least they can have a target to be able to run that. And I'll have a decent amount of time before the Paralympics to be able to run those times. And I'm quite confident with all my training and the work we're putting in at the moment. I know you're over there in the West at the moment. But uh, being here in Melbourne and especially being the East Coast, uh, are you hoping to come over this side of uh, the country to uh, at least compete in some events, hopefully here in Melbourne? Oh, I don't know if there's – oh, actually, there might be a Melbourne trip in the making. Uh, we get to find that out. I would love to go and race in Melbourne. They have uh, one of the biggest um, track classics in Australia. That'd be pretty cool if they had a power event there. But, yeah, I do love racing in Melbourne. I've raced there once, but, yeah, I would love to go back and race. Definitely, yeah. We might, uh, let's let's hope that happens for, for your sake. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us a bit about your amazing uh, coaches that uh, has prepared you for, obviously, the World Championship success, but obviously now 
and that hopefully that preparation to be selected in the Aussie team for the Paralympics. Yeah, I would say I definitely have like one of the most amazing coaches out there. Uh, he's super supportive. I've had him since the end of 2019. His name's Danny Kevin. And um, he also, he works at the WA Institute of Sport and he's come on the past three teams with me. So it's pretty awesome to have my own coach coming away with me and still coaching me. He's yeah, definitely been my, one of my biggest supporters, uh, especially for the 400 uh, when the training gets tough and also the races get tough. He's always there to keep pushing me on even when I don't want to go on, but no, it's great. He was there at world champs and he was screaming for me to go faster in the 200 and I could actually hear him, which I usually can't hear many people. (laughs) I could definitely hear him saying something and telling me to go faster. I think, yeah, having that support and definitely having, yeah, a coach that is just super nice and yeah, someone who just believes in you and definitely wants the best for you. It's yeah, pretty amazing. And also my amazing track squad, um, it's called Kinetic Track Squad. They're the most supportive squad ever. They always make you smile, even if you rock up to training and you're not feeling so great or you're a bit sad or something's happened, they're always there to make you smile. And I think I wouldn't be able to do what I do without having the support of them because, yeah, you don't, can't really like succeed if you're not actually happy. So, yeah, I am definitely have great support around me. Let's talk a bit about your athlete's journey. Where did it all start and why did you choose it? Yeah, so I started athletics when I was 12. A lot of people usually start younger and do little athletics, but back then I, well, when I was younger, I used to do a bunch of different sports. I did swimming, horse riding, I did ballroom dancing, um, and I did, yeah, lots of different random sports, and I never really found my passion for athletics until I was in year five and I actually did pretty well at the school athletics carnival. Mm -hmm. So a year later, I was told by a physio to go to a para-athletics come try day. Didn't think too much of it. And then once I was trying out the running and the long jump, I actually, yeah, quite enjoyed it. And a coach told me that one day I could go to the Paralympics, which is something I did not realize was possible because it wasn't promoted as much back then. So yeah, I, yeah, once I heard that, I was like, oh my goodness, maybe I should actually, yeah, give this a go. And then I did not exactly expect three years later to have qualified for Commonwealth Games and gone there and competed and won a silver medal. So, yeah, I think it was yeah pretty good that I started and I'm very glad I've stuck to it. I've loved it. I love it every day. I love all the competitions. It's, yeah, never boring. The clarification is T38. Um, for everyone at home who have no idea what that is, can you please explain to our listeners or viewers that's watching this, exactly what that is yeah so the t38 classification uh is it means that so i have cerebral palsy so it can it's more of a coordination classification so the 30s are usually cerebral palsy or some sort of other neurological condition and the 38 is the mildest of them so when i run you can't really tell that i have a disability but i'm also running with people who are similarly affected to me. So it means for me, my disability affects me with uh, both my legs and my right arm and my muscles are just a bit more tight. My coordination's just not as like normal and yeah, I get quite fatigued quite easily, but yeah, it's good to be able to compete against people with similar impairment and it makes the playing field a lot more level. I admire, admire Paralympians and especially the way that you, you know, go about everything and you know ignore what you actually you know the disadvantages that you have and use it to your advantages especially what you have and you just described the things that um sometimes can be disadvantaged how do you mentally prepare for these things and physically prepare for these things just in case yeah well I think definitely like in terms of like physical stuff I definitely lots of training and stuff like that helps train my body to be out of it yeah I guess, have better coordination. It's never going to be a hundred percent and my muscles are always going to get tight. So I think also having some prehab to reduce the risk of injuries, because I do get injured a bit more than other able-bodied people and also having lots of treatment. So physio treatment and massage, that's very helpful for for me and using other things on the side to yeah make sure my body is feeling the best that it can and it can perform up to the ability it can. And then I guess mentally, I think, yeah, I've just come like, to realize, yeah, my disability is going to affect me, but I'm going to try and let it affect me as little as possible and just kind of use it as my strength and just use everything I've trained for to be able to, yeah, compete at a high level. 
will be some highlights other than uh, the World Championship? Oh, I think probably the highlight of my career would have to be my first ever international event, which was the 2018 Commonwealth Games back on the Gold Coast. Yeah, I went there as a little 15-year-old, not really like knowing too much. I was going there kind of just as one of the youngsters on the team just to get some experience and no one expected me to medal, uh, especially the time I was running going into it. So to come away with a silver medal from that and a massive PB, I think I kind of shocked everyone and yeah. So I kind of cemented my place that, yeah, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here for a while. You mentioned about the Gold Coast, Commonwealth Games. What was the PB that you go, were going into the events and what what was the PB that you smashed at the end? Yeah, so, well, I guess if we're starting at the start of that season, my PB was exactly 14 seconds. Then at the Nationals, I ran 13.60, which is a 0.4 PB, and then before well, yeah so my pb before the commonwealth games was a 1360 and then at the commonwealth games i got 1317 so 0.43 of my pb which not a lot of people do that so yeah that was pretty cool and i'm definitely yeah still got so much more improvement that yeah i made throughout all those years and i'm still improving now which is pretty cool you mentioned about the tokyo paralympics uh which will technically happen in 2021 uh this year how good was it to go over to Tokyo um, in the Paralympics? And obviously it was a pretty strange Paralympics like it was like the Olympic Games with not many people actually, well, actually went at all. How strange was it to go in front of people, like, competing your events with no spectators? Yeah, no, it was definitely one of the most strangest things, especially coming from, yeah, competing at the 2018 Commonwealth Games and the 2019 World Champs, where I had both my family there and there was also spectators able to cheer on the athletes. It was definitely a Games to remember, um, and I'm quite glad we're out of that COVID era, so at least next year is going to have a bit more of a crowd. <laughs> but, yeah, it was kind of odd. It was, yeah, running in a stadium with literally no one except for a few coaches and then just the officials. So running a whole 400 with no noise at all, that was a very interesting race. And it was also raining as well, which was not the most fun thing. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard raining. I'm pretty sure it just started to bucket down right before we started our 400. <laughs> but you know what? You've got to prepare for all conditions. And I think Perth weather, sometimes it definitely rains at competitions. So at least we're getting prepared here for, yeah, to actually happen on the big stage. As para-athletes, especially at that event in particular, how did you motivate yourselves knowing that there was no crowd? Yeah, I think I think kind of for all para-athletes, we're all really determined athletes. And to be able to firstly make it to the big stage like that and qualify and get on your country's team, you've already kind of got partially away there. So I feel like everyone will there was already motivated. They didn't really care too much about the crowds. Everyone's there to do one job and that's definitely to win or do your best and represent your country with pride. So I think everyone was just so prepared and it was still a good atmosphere. Athletes, yeah, especially off the track, well, for my classification, we all talk to each other and stuff like that and no one's really mean to each other. On the track, yes, you're competing against each other. So I think it was just a good atmosphere and having your own team there as well. The Australian team is super supportive. We have a pretty large team, which is pretty cool. And even people from other sports um, support each other. So I would, in the elevator, and I would see like some swimmers and stuff and we'll all ask how you're going and stuff like that. And people would be sitting downstairs watching each other on the TV. So I think knowing you have that support is definitely pretty helpful. And of course, the whole of Australia being back home, especially a lot of people in lockdown at the time. Everyone was watching, so I think that was, yeah, pretty perfect. What does the sport of athletics mean to you now? Athletics to me, it's kind of, it's really important. I would say it's pretty much my whole life, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm able to be able to do this pretty much full time. And I would say it's just an amazing community. The people I've met from overseas and the people I've met in Australia, I've made so many lifelong friends. And I just feel so supported in this sport. It's pretty good great what's great and Australia is super helpful um, and supportive and everyone in Australia they love sports I think that's what makes it so much more motivating to be able to do it and especially wear the green and gold because not a lot of people get to do that so I think yeah I just feel honoured to be able to compete at the level I've been able to compete at and I 
just love the sport. I love every moment of it. What's your PB that you're trying to smash now? Now, you mentioned about the PB that you smashed at the Commonwealth Games um, you know, on the Gold Coast uh, five years ago. Have you smashed that PB since and what is it now? Yes, I've smashed it, I think, actually twice since the 2018 Commonwealth Games. I did it, I got 12.94 at the 2019 World Champs where I got a bronze medal. Um, Tokyo wasn't as great of a time. I did have a strained hamstring a little bit before that. So just to make it there and make a final was pretty cool. And then the 2018 Commonwealth Games, the conditions weren't exactly great. So I didn't get it there. But I did actually finally get it this year after four years of not PBing. And I got it at National Champs in Brisbane. I got 12.91. And then I broke it again. Well, I equaled it at the World Champs this year. So, yeah, I've run 12.91 twice now, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty consistent with my times, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to beat this year, uh, next year? I think I definitely want to start running into the 12 eights. Uh, definitely consistently run under 13 would be pretty cool. And then for the 400, I want to see how close I can get to a minute or even hopefully one day be able to smash a minute. That would be the ultimate goal. What's your ultimate goal? I think my ultimate goal is probably just to make as many Paralympic teams as I can, but also to get a Paralympic medal. That's definitely one big thing on the cards. And I think just keep enjoying the sport because as long as I'm enjoying it, it yeah, really doesn't matter like how I do. I just have to love it to stay in it. Do you have any... Other than your coaches, do you have like any other mentors or, um, you know, how important has your family been throughout this journey? Yeah, well, I would say my family, they're definitely my number one supporters. Uh, they're always there for me. And except for Tokyo, they've come to every international event, which is so cool to have, yeah, people in the crowd that, yeah, really want the best for you. And they definitely cheer for me pretty loud. And to be able to see them after the race, after the 400 at World Champs and go give them a hug, that, yeah, that felt so amazing just to be able to see them and know that they're very proud of me and I've had so many other supporters there's so many people out there like way too many to thank um who support me on my journey it's definitely not a one-person journey even though there's one person running the race there's so many people behind the scene being able to get that person to run the race I have yeah from physios to dietitians psychologists and just so many more people yeah, it's definitely not a one-man show. It's definitely, yeah, a whole team. For everyone that should get involved in athletes, especially, um, you know, people that have disability, um, what, would you, what would be your advice to them in particular? I think my advice would definitely be to don't stop trying and also try a lot of things. Just find what you love and never give up because yeah if I listened to people when I was younger telling me that I'm never going to be able to do something in sport because I was not very good at sport when I was younger I think I yeah wouldn't have been here today but yeah just don't listen to those people who are telling you no give give your all and just yeah never ever give up and especially for the young kids with disabilities yeah, don't let your disability stop you. And yeah, you can do some amazing things if you just believe in yourself and keep trying. And I think with the Paralympics coming up next year, I'm really hoping we can get a lot more para athletes in the sport and get a lot more recognition for para sport, in particular para athletics. So yeah, I'm excited to see the future of this sport and hopefully see a lot more people in it. I have to finish with a couple of lighthearted questions as well. Um, do you have an embarrassing moment on track? Oh, to be honest, there's probably a lot. Um, I don't actually know. I don't think there's been too many embarrassing moments. Definitely in training, I do trip over a decent amount. Um, I guess that's part of the cerebral palsy, but it's also quite funny, um, quite a lot of the trips. Um, I would say probably one of the things that happened to me that wasn't really embarrassing, it was just a little bit of an accident, was Tokyo, I got yellow carded because um, I was unsteady in the blocks and actually oh. made someone else false start. So I guess that was a bit awkward, but I didn't get disqualified, which was good because, yeah, it was just a bit of a random moment and the ground was slippery. My hand slipped a little. So, yeah, interesting moment. Do you have a pre-competition superstition or ritual and do you have a pump-up song uh, before your event? Yes. Okay. I definitely, I have quite a few little like superstitious rituals. I always wear my long black socks when I run. That's just something I've done for like well over five years now. 
some people may find it weird. I don't really think there's any benefit to it, but it's just my look now. So I've got to keep going with that. Yeah. And yeah, also when I get into the blocks, no matter what race it is, I always do a jump, a pretty large jump before getting into the blocks. A few times okay. my head has come over and flipped me on the face. I've got some videos of that. It's quite awkward. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's definitely, yeah, there's some yeah rituals I do. And then I have a few songs in my pump up playlist. I usually change it around each big comp and stuff like that. And I have a playlist that like, yeah, I use for each comp, especially with a lot of trending music and music that I like at the moment. But I would say... Probably one of my favorite songs is Can't Hold Us by Macklemore. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not I bad. That's a it's a good song to listen to. And yeah, I definitely have some, yeah, pretty hardcore beats. And yeah, it's it's good. It's good to have some music to pump you up. Here's for these last two. I have to ask now, you mentioned about your amazing squad that you have over there in WA. So I'm going to ask this question about your squad in WA. So who's the comedian, the best singer, and into their TikTok slash be real? Oh, okay. I would say, oh, okay. There's two comedians. I would say Reese Pryor and Piper Cornelius. They're both very funny and always make us laugh, especially when they're accidentally tripping over. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're pretty <laughs> funny athletes. Uh, singer. I don't actually know if anyone can sing in this group now I think about it. Actually, I would say probably one of the best singers is Juju. She yeah, she loves her tunes and she loves some Taylor Swift. So she's oh. always uh, popping out some tunes at training. And the person who's probably into the TikTok and be real the most, I would probably say it's me kind of embarrassingly because I I'm probably the social media person of the group. And I'm the person <laughs> who take like a hundred photos at training. We just have to stop everything just to take photos. So yeah, I would definitely say that's me, which yeah, a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've got this is not the last question, but I have to follow it up after you just mentioned that. Have you dragged any of your squad members to be in your TikTok uh, dancers or Be Real photos or something similar to that nature? Yeah. Actually, every time Be Real does go for training, I'm always like, stop what you're doing. Let's take a Be Real. <laughs> but yeah. No, I've dragged them into a few Be Reals. If I'm running, I won't take my beer or be, make it late. That's okay. Um, but I don't really do many TikTok dances. I'm not the most coordinated for that. I probably should start doing a bit more. Um, oh, but Juju loves her TikTok dances, so she's definitely one to watch out with that. Ooh. But, yeah, no, I, I definitely drag people into Instagram photos, especially when there's a cute sunset or a cute moment happening. So I've got to finish with this last one. Do you have any, like, sponsors that you want to sh give a shout-out? Yeah, well, I would say my main sponsor is definitely Mizuno. They have sponsored me since 2020, so all throughout that COVID period and through three major events, which is pretty cool. They're super supportive and they're really, yeah, starting to pave the way in terms of sustainability and they are definitely a pretty inclusive sponsor. Uh, they are the shoe sponsor for the Paralympic team next year, which is pretty cool to especially have a sponsor for the Paralympics. And I just, yeah, I love their shoes. they yeah, such an amazing brand. But uh, Brianna, thank you so much for giving up some of your time to join us. It's awesome having on the show. Uh, I've been, we've been trying to hopefully have a Paralympian on the show and I've, we've finally got one. So uh, thank you so much for giving up some of your time to join us. And uh, we can't wait to follow your progress uh, throughout the rest of this year and into next year in 2024. Hopefully we'll get to see you on TV again because, uh, Breb's in Australia, hopefully in Paris um, sometime in 2024, and uh, we'll be cheering for you from down here in Melbourne. And uh, and congratulations on your chairman in 2023, especially at the World Championship, so silver medal in the 400 metres, and uh, all the best uh, for uh, the next uh, year or so. Thank you so much for having me on, and I really hope I can come to Melbourne and visit you guys one day. Thank you. No worries, and that's uh, Rianne Clark there, of course, uh, P-L-Y, of course, which is Paralympian. Uh, of course, looking forward to following her progress uh, for the rest of this year and, of course, in next year in the preparation for the Paris uh, Paralympics in 2024. There's more on the Smashboard show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th celebration.